audience, I would like to introduce you, our lovely audience, for taking the time to join us today. Now, we understand some of the challenges in clinic and the fact that you have very busy schedules right now. Um, so thank you. We really appreciate you being here. Now, while we may not be able to solve all of them, we do feel that using technology, we hope to inspire some um, insight today, some helpful measures um, to kind of solve some of these problems you face. There will be a couple of polls to answer throughout the webinar, so we do love your participation. And there is a Q&A section at the bottom of the screen, should you wish to ask anything, which we'll address later. Now, um, to get us started, we're going to introduce you to our first panelist, which is Ishara from Vetstoria. So please say a few words about yourself. Yeah, sure. Hi, Vicky. Um, hello to, you know, rest of my lovely panelists here and everyone that join us. My name is Ishara, just like Vicky mentioned. Uh, I lead product marketing at Vetstoria. I've been here for almost a couple of years now. And obviously, I'm a pet owner. And when I came across Vetstoria, I felt like it'll be such a wonderful story to tell because we get to show how we can save time um, for veterinary clinics and, you know, make sure we can get the care that's needed for pets. So yeah, excited to be here and see what we can share. Thank you, Isha. And I also have the lovely Mary from Pet Desk. Oh, you're on mute. And we've said that a number of times, haven't we, across the Yeah. <laughs> I'll, someday I'll figure out how to work Zoom, but not today. <laughs> um, I'm Mary, I'm with Pet Desk. Um, I'm a CBT. I've got about uh, 13 years in clinical practice uh, before moving over to work for Pet Desk. Um, and basically, I get to help uh, support all of our sales teams and understanding our products and um, understanding our industry a little bit better. Um, and I just love the Pet Desk mission. And so that's why I'm here. Thank you, Mary. And we have two Adams here today. So I'm going to be saying Adam G and Adam K. I gave this a lot of thought. Um, so Adam G, if you could introduce yourself, please. Hey everybody, I'm Adam. I'm the CEO and founder of Whisker Cloud, and uh, excited to have people from all of our other partner companies here at Vestoria, Pet Desk, and Groomer. Brilliant, thank you. And Adam K. Hi, I'm Adam as well. Um, I am leading marketing for Groomer.io. So our app is designed to help all pet groomers optimize their processes and get back to what they do best: grooming, obviously. I'm also a cat dad, a passionate cat dad, and I have a little Shorky who lives with my mom currently, but um, yeah, excited to be aboard. Thank you. And we also have my lovely colleague, Asta, who's uh, in the wings, um, helping me keep the technology flowing. So um, thank you for being here, Asta. Feel free to say hello um, if you want to. Um, <laughs> so the, um, I might, are you there, Asta? Good. Could you say hello? Hello, everyone, and thank you all for being here. Thank you. And um, I'm your um, host for this discussion. I'm really happy to be here. Um, my name's Victoria. I work at Vetstoria as the implementation manager, but I'm also a veterinary nurse in the UK. Very passionate about ways that we can help clinics um, sort of utilize their team better. And I'm of course um, a crazy animal lover with three dogs, two cats, turtle, fish, you name it. So very chaotic household. Okay. Thank you for introducing yourself, everybody. So to open our discussion today, um, we would like to discuss some key benefits of technology, but we want to understand what the pain points are as well. So there will be a poll appearing in a moment that will help us understand this from your perspective. Um, so if you could audience um, answer that question, that would be great and we can look at the results in a moment. Um, in the meantime, Ishara, if I can come to you first, uh, what do you feel are the key signs a clinic needs technology? So one thing is, I think when you have too much of repetitive manual work, for example, like phone calls, um, and when you know that you can do without it, let's take our front desk teams, for example, who is pretty much the face of a clinic. They are the first point of contact when a pet owner comes in and they are the ones that would say goodbye. They would have to help with paperwork, send out reminders, confirmations, give information to someone that's walking in, give information to team members. There's so much of going on at a clinic. And I think when that phone keeps ringing, when you have to keep taking appointments, that's also information. I think that is a lot to handle and if you can actually automate that that would be helpful I actually 
have a little bit of experience, not really um, in a veterinary clinic, but just having to just answer phones at one point in my life when I was in hospitality. And if there was a way my clients was able to just simply get on the website and send me their information that, you know, they could make their bookings, that would have made my life a whole lot easier because you get tired of that. So when you have all these important things that you have to do, and if you have to keep answering that phone all the time, and if that pet owner that's calling is someone like me who loves to talk about my dog, at least about for like 15 minutes or so, that's the conversation that, you know, you wish that you could like reroute. So if you take a technology like real-time online booking, what Vetstoria offers, that's what Vetstoria would help you do. You can reroute that work. So those very repetitive things, like even what PetDesk helps with the reminders and confirmations, you can reroute things like that. So you can um, pay attention to the important work. Because I think according to a recent survey that Galaxy Vets have done, they found out that customer service representatives have, do find um, you know, the lowest fulfillment in their work because of how repetitive their work is and how manual it is so I feel like that would be one challenge you know that you can address um, with technology and maybe another one is pet owner experience I might like being on the phone but sometimes if I can just do something on my phone just send a text or just go to a website and book it I'm happy to do it so while sometimes we think wait will we lose personal touch by doing that but I think the new way of offering that service is being where your customer is, people like me. So when you offer more digital channels and when you offer things like real-time online booking, when you allow pet owners to book anytime you want, which is what happens with Vestoria, because pet owners like me can come after work, log into the clinic's website and book an appointment without bothering anyone, um, that improvement of experience you know, kind of helps your clinic's client retention process also. So for me, those are two key things that I feel um, as issues that are there that technology can help. Now, that's really good insight, um, Ishara. Thank you. And Adam G, do you have um, some insights you could provide as well? What do you think um, are the signs a clinic needs some more technology? And you're on mute as well. Yeah, and we're not doing well with that. So anyway, I think at the end of the day, you know, one of the things that's great about Whisker Cloud is just every business on earth has to have a website. Um, it's, you know, it's the most important thing you have. You can't do online booking if you don't have an online presence or a website. And it's tough to send reminders and, you know, send to go fill out forms if you don't have those live on a website. So I think a lot of people um, look at a website as, you know, you might look at it as just like your online resume page or what you kind of want to showcase your business. That's okay. You might look at it from client acquisition, which is also okay. I mean, that's a lot of the stuff that Whisker Cloud does. But I think some of the cooler things that we do, and I, I don't think a lot of people think about this for websites, are it, it could be a place where people can apply for jobs. And it can be a place where people um, complete forms or get to know questions or read FAQs um, or can upload information for the doctors and things like that. So, you know, I, I think when we're talking about burnout, all of our companies sort of solve for burnout. And I also think there's ways that all of our products can be used outside of the out of the box functions. Um, mm -hmm. They can be set up differently with your workflows and, and your technology stack to really make your life easier. I think the thing that most people struggle with personally and professionally um, is just being willing to really work with your implementation team, work with your customer success team and really get to know the products. Um, because I think, all you have to do is really just say, hey, by the way, this is an issue for us. What do we need to do to fix it? And you can mm -hmm. fix it. So, you know, I, I think when you're when you're talking about like stacking products, you know, what's nice about everyone on this call is obviously we all talk to each other and we integrate really beautifully, um, whether it's us or not, or apps on your phone or things like that. Um, you know, I, I think it's important to be outgoing and and to really be loud about the issues you're having and and find solutions for them. So I think technology solves all of that for businesses in veterinary medicine and outside of it. Brilliant. Thank you, Adam. And I think you're right. And we'll certainly look into a little bit later on today as well about sort of embracing technology and how to get your teams on board as well as we as we know that that can be a potential blocker um, to adopting change. Um, so, um, Astor, I believe the poll is ready. Um, do you have the results? Are you able to see that, Vicky? 
And I can't see anything yet. Can anybody else? Oh, somebody else can see them. <laughs> so they can see it. Okay. I'll see if we. So 40% of the participants believe burnout is one of their current pain points in the clinic, while 36% feel, uh, which is a close one, that the rest, all of the above are uh, current issues, high call volume, short staffness, um, no shows, client retention, new client acquisition, all of them are a current pain point. Wow. Um, and sadly, um, I think it doesn't come as a surprise to us on the, the, the panel here today. Um, we speak to, to many veterinary professionals, uh, many clinics, um, and it's widely reported and it's a, a sad state of affairs. Um, but what's um, positive about this is that if we know the problem, we can then find a solution. And this brings me on to um, my next question in how technology can benefit your clinic and uh, so that it's more efficient and profitable. And Mary, can you provide some insights um, regarding this? Yeah, absolutely. And I think Ashara really opened the door on this one really well. Um, so being able to provide greater efficiency, allowing your team to get back to doing what they love, um, which is interacting with pets and pet parents is huge. For the every hour that you spend paying your receptionist to do a repetitive task, there is a technology out there that can do that task more quickly and more cheaply. Not that it should ever replace your front desk staff, but again, back to that point, they should be doing what they love. They should be interacting with the pet parent. They should be coming out from behind the desk and greeting the pets as they enter the clinic, helping coordinate those pets moving from room to room to make sure that there isn't a bunch of like barking and craziness in the lobby so that when people come in, it's, it's, a, it's a positive experience. I don't want to walk through the door of a vet clinic with my cat in a carrier and have, you know, a bull mastiff barking at my cat, you know, while I'm coming in the door. And to really empower our CSRs to understand who's coming in, how should I set this up? How can I create the best client experience? That's providing true value. That's providing true uh, customer uh, care in your practice. So letting, utilizing and leveraging technology to, to eliminate repetitive tasks is really, really important. Um, another thing that we tend to do in the veterinary industry, and, and I can say this from years in clinic, is we view the client experience through our own lens. We view the client experience through the veterinary professional lens. We don't view it through the client lens. And it's very different when you stop working in practice and come back to it to see those gaps to see those holes. And so oftentimes we worry about things like, well, what if I, you know, lose control of my schedule? Or what if I, you know, um, have people text me and I don't reply back in time or whatever it might be. But the reality is that clients want digital means of communication and self-service. And so we need to view it through their lens and their desire to engage with our clinic on a digital level. So it really not only creates more efficiency and more profit for your practice, but it empowers your team to be themselves and to problem solve more important problems that can't be solved by a technology. Absolutely. And um, thank you for that. And again, touching on what you and Dishara have said, um, and the if anyone hasn't read the, the burnout survey um, from Dr. Ivan and Galaxy Vets, it's a really interesting read. Um, and you mentioned about the CSRs in particular, Mary, and I read a study actually about how important and how we cannot underestimate the CSR role because they're bonding with the clients probably more often than the, the clinical team members are and are that first point of contact in clinic and sort of pairing that with how they feel um, under fulfilled at the moment is really interesting. And some of the uh, points in the survey, there were some suggestions from CSRs and other team members on how to improve, uh, you know, sort of the, the working environment at the moment was by, you know, sort of better control of the, the front desk and utilizing technology, improving scheduling, et cetera. Um, so I think um, you're quite right. There are a whole host of benefits to adopting this so they can do the job that they were um, sort of loving to do. And Adam Kay, do you have some insight in this? Um, can you sort of uh, teach us anything from your perspective? Absolutely. So you can kind of double thread this with the burnout, especially because groomer is designed to take the lift off of those repetitive tasks. Oftentimes the groomer is the one that will want to communicate directly with the pet parent 
whether that's a needy pet parent, probably like myself who wants the fluffy tail, the fluffy ears, instead upload an image of what you would like them to look like, throw some notes in there. The groomer does not have to go back and forth to the receptionist or the receptionist desk throughout their workflow, you know, encouraging them to have so much more time back that it's something that a ton of our current groomers rave about, um, getting that phone call and communications completely automated takes that lift off of them. And quite frankly, kind of to Ishara's point, pet parents love to talk about their pets, especially when it comes to their looks. So having that kind of guardrail um, really allows for that full efficiency, less burnout, because it is draining to talk on the phone for 20 minutes when you're like, I'm doing this design right now. I'm in the middle of a nail cut. I have three nails left. I need to get back and do that type of thing. Um, the other part of it would be people looking to expand their vet clinic into the grooming side of the house. I understand that sometimes it is quite siloed and this would allow them to join their tech stack, know what's going on in the grooming side of the house without having to call, text, make appointments, all the above, rather than they can, like what Mary said, focus on what they do best, be the face of the business and mm -hmm. promote the best business that they can. Absolutely. No, I agree. Um, and so we we understand what the, the pain points are and the challenges in clinic, the benefits. So the next question is, where do we begin? Um, where do we even start when we're sort of researching, you know, technology providers? Um, so there will be another poll um, in a moment, just asking the audience, you know, what areas of technology do they feel will benefit them or their clinic? So if you could take a couple of minutes to answer that, it would be great. It does cover the appointment scheduling, client um, engagement platform, website and SEO, and of course, pet grooming software. Um, so while we wait for those um, results to come in, if I could come back to you, Adam G, um, what kind of advice can we give the audience? Where would they even begin when they're researching tech providers? Um, well, this webinar, I would just stop there. But um, outside of that, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, luckily for all of us, veterinary medicine and, and the pet world in general are very small, meaning, you know, it's not hard to go ask what other people are using and what they've had success with, um, you know. I think that's an important place to start, but I also think it's, you know, kind of understanding the reputation that the companies have. And, you know, of course the website guy is going to say this, go look at, go look at every company's website and say like, does this website wow me? You'd be shocked at how many technology companies when I'm looking for new tech for us at Whisker Cloud, so many websites of, of software providers that I need to use don't blow me away. And I'm, I, I, it's an instant no for me. So you know, I would look at the research uh, or look at the websites, research and um, and just see who has the right vibe for you and, and look and think about like what you want out of your business. What are you trying to get? You know, any any um, any good, caring, strong software SaaS company um, like everyone on this call is going to have a website that really tells you what they're about, what what services they provide. You know, we're going to offer social proof, things like that, things that you should all have on your websites, by the way. Um, but, you know, go look at the services offered and figure out, is this something that is needed for me? Now, when I see 40% burnout, it's not shocking. This is a veterinary poll. Of course, we're going to have burnout and all of the above is our number one, because that's veterinary medicine right now. Technology really solves for those things. So again, sort of like what I was saying earlier, I think it's less about um, trying to check boxes. Yes, I need online booking. Yes, I need an app. Yes, I need to do this. Yes, I need a website. But really go into it. And you know whether you're doing a demo with a software company or you're talking to an implementation person, just ask the right questions. Hey, by the way, you might not be able to help with this, but this is an issue we really struggle with that drives everyone crazy and is and is really burning us out. What can you do for this? If if not, it's okay. But if there's something you can do, I think you'd be shocked um, at how many people don't ask for those things. And then you know, there's typically workarounds or or something that can be built to to make it work for you. Absolutely. And um, I like what you said about asking the questions. And I think it's important for anyone that's researching the technology to 
ask their teams as well hey what are your pain points what are your ideas what do you think could help and um, getting insight from all of your colleagues um, I think is really important and then as you mentioned taking them uh, to the tech provider and seeing if there can be a solution there. Um, Ishara do you have any sort of insights here as well? Yeah absolutely Vicky so I was thinking when it comes to new technology I mean even with someone like me I would always you know, when it's something new, it's like, oh, do I have to learn this? So I know it's universal, right? So when it comes to a new platform, I think it's always good to ask the with the company that you're dealing with, what kind of training do they provide you? What kind of support will they have? How easy is onboarding going to be? Can I reach out to them whenever I want to, when I have a problem? Can they, you know, quickly help change something in the setup just in case I'm stuck? So I think understanding what kind of training and support and onboarding that's available to you is important. Um, how much do they understand your business? Now, at Red Store and in all of our companies, actually, we have everyone who is at least had past experience within a clinic. So a lot of them understand how a clinic works. So because of that, we are able to design the product in that way and also understand where clinics come from and what's really going on. So if the platform they're evaluating, if they also, if you get the sense that they understand how your company works, you know, how much do they really empathize with you? Do they know what the day in and day out of your clinic is like? That's very helpful. And if you really get to things like the product, you know, how much of it can I really customize? I know with online booking, sometimes it's scary because you're opening it up to pet owners. So can this really reflect our availability, our clinician preferences? Can it, uh, you know, do things like limiting certain appointments or can it really provide messaging and things like that when you're booking an appointment? So to what extent can I tailor make it? Um, and if you are going to integrate with other systems, what other systems? Can it integrate with my practice management system? Can it integrate with my existing remind system? So what kind of ecosystem would this platform fit in with? I think those are some of the basic questions can I, you can ask. And of course, how will pet donors feel about it? Will they find this easy to use? And then again, if you're at a very early stage, you can look at um, review sites and see, you know, what other people say. Of course, there are so many other questions that you can ask when it comes to even online booking, you know, um, does it do all these things? But I suppose at the start, those are the things that you want to perhaps um, question and see if it's the right fit for you. And, and I like that. And I think it's um, it's also useful. And uh, I suppose not to be nervous about asking your pet parents yeah. for their opinions and what they yeah. what they feel may work for you and your clinic or what is missing. And don't be afraid to ask. I think they would actually feel quite valued. You're taking the time to to ask them for their insight as well. So um, I agree with you, Shara, absolutely. And um, Adam Kay, um, how about you? Thank you. Dive in. <laughs> Yeah, of course. So I absolutely agree with everything that Ishara said. Um, the one thing on the grooming side of the house that is very, a little bit more important as far as the tech stack, especially with the appointment management and stuff like that, is really allowing to guardrail the proper information to get to the receptionist, especially from mainly from the pet parents, like we've been mentioning, to the groomer themselves. Um, again, like I've mentioned, without opening the floodgates for, you know, tons and tons of feedback, because sometimes it can counteract our goal of getting valuable feedback for improving futures for the future, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one thing that we definitely take into consideration, as long as, as well as rather the onboarding process. So. We are very um, hand-holding, so to speak, to set everyone up for success when they come through the groomer pipeline. They are going to get onboarded. Their schedules are gonna be optimized. No two groomers really use it the same way, but the capabilities exist. So using that to the advantage, again, to the burnout note of being able to prevent burnout by having proper workflows, not disrupting someone's workday or schedule when they, I'm the type I like to show up, I have everything on my agenda planned out. And if something like is 15, 30 minutes over, it kind of will throw off my vibe. So we're trying to prevent that um, yeah. pretty much. 
Absolutely. Thank you, Adam. And, and Mary, last but not least, of course. I'll be more than happy to close this question out. Um, so everybody's made amazing points, all really uh, important considerations. The one thing that I would like to remind is that you should also be evaluating these products from your client's perspective, because any tool, any technology that you use is only going to be as good as how well your clients will engage with it. So if you're evaluating tools, um, download the app. Walk through the appointment request workflow process. Look at comp comparable websites. Mm -hmm. See, if I look at this website from my phone, how is, how is it going to appear for my clients? Because the majority of searches for veterinarians, things like that, they come from mobile phones. Mm -hmm. And if I download this app, what's going to keep this app on my phone? Why would I want to have it around 365 so that I can communicate with my veterinarian? If I'm doing some sort of appointment booking process, is it easy enough to get through that I don't feel there are so many barriers in place that my client would opt out in the middle of the booking process? And how is that tracked? How do I know how many of my clients are opting out so that I can tweak it if I need to? And is the support team going to be there to help support those changes as I settle into these products? Those are all really important questions to ask. And every tool you evaluate, you should be looking at from a client perspective as well. Absolutely. I really like that, Mary, from the, the client perspective. And, and when I was stalking everybody's websites here, because I did, and um, I loved on Pet Desk, actually, it's something that hit home to me as a pet owner. And I know I have got the veterinary lens, but the uh, Pet Desk laws, I'd actually not known about them before. So I think having the, the core values, what you stand for as a company, and whether that sort of relates to emotionally, as well, of course, uh, trying to sort out the, the operational side of things. Um, I really did like that. And I've remembered it. And um, also, one thing I would like to mention, if you're anything like me, um, I go on TripAdvisor for everything, every review, any takeout, any, honestly, my husband gets really annoyed with me about this, because I can't make a decision, unless I've looked at the reviews. Um, so I think that can also be uh, a useful measure to see sort of what the reviews are from from clients that have tried and tested platforms um you know sort of what are the the, the positives etc from them um it could be uh, a good starting point as well um so great so i believe the poll results are in for where technology um may benefit uh, some clinics currently oh there we go it's lovely it's popped up on the screen Okay, so appointment scheduling um, is sort of at the top to 47%, but the client engagement platform as well um, is matching that, followed by website and SEO grooming, and then all of the above, quite a high number at 31%. So we can certainly see um, that there is a need for this, possibly the, the pain points that you've described on the poll earlier and our discussion, you can see where the solution may tie in um, with your current situation. So thank you for answering that. Okay, so we know um, what the, the problem is, the benefits, where to begin. Um, so the next question is, any change in clinic can be quite daunting. And I'm really ashamed to say that when I was a veterinary nurse, I remember this poor soul phoned up about technology and I was knee deep with a dog in some stuff. And I said, I'm not coming to the phone, I'm far too busy. And I didn't want to embrace change or technology. That was who I was uh, many years ago now. Um, so it can be nerve wracking, it can be challenging. How do we get teams excited um, to onboard and adopt technology? And Adam Kay, I'd like to come to you first, please. Sure. There we go. Got it unmuted. Um, yeah. <laughs> so of course, like I just mentioned, onboarding is kind of a key aspect to Groomer.io at the moment. Um, currently, we really love to set everyone up for success, have as many people involved in that onboarding process with one of our experts, just so that the entire clinic is seen when it comes to scheduling services prices, extra services, pretty much anything you can imagine in the grooming industry, um, we have available for them to set up. And we understand that sometimes onboarding a new tech stack can be very overwhelming. And some people don't like to part with their Google calendars, their notebooks, their, you know, people are set in their ways. And it's really making them really comfortable and excited to efficient or for efficiency to optimize their processes 
thinking that I get another hour back in my day. I can go get my hair cut. I can go get a coffee. I can go to lunch with my mom. Something like that, changing the narrative that instead of me being busy working all day long, I have something to kind of be my right hand paw or my right paw rep and, um, you know, something along those lines to help make the entire business from receptionist to bather to groomer to the owner more efficient with a lot more transparency of what's going on in their business as well. We may have lost you, Victoria. <laughs> yeah, she, oh. she, we did lose her. Oops. Um, well, I'll, I'll hop in on that question and follow up with you, Adam. So the question awesome. about, you know, the fear of technology, um, we've already gotten a couple in the Q&A um, asking, you know, how do we help staff not feel threatened? How do we bring in these changes? Um, and exactly. I think one of the most important things to remember is that your staff should be part of this change. We talked a little bit earlier about receptionists getting to do more of what they love, getting to interact with clients and taking these repetitive tasks off their plate. Who wouldn't want that? So this boils down to a fear of job security, right? And I would to totally be intimidated by technology if I felt like my whole job was the repetitive tasks that the technology is taking over. So shift that model, help them understand how this is going to unlock really cool new opportunities for them, what the business wants and needs, the kind of customer care that you want to be able to enable them to do, and have them be part of the process. So if you aren't familiar with change management in general and how to run a change in your organization, definitely just Google it. There's a lot of great resources out there. Um, I always say keep those three C's in your mind. So communication, collaboration, and commitment, right? You should be communicating the whys of the change. They should be part of identifying the pain points that are going to initiate this change. They should be collaborating with you on finding the tool. Now, that doesn't mean just send them wild and let them do every demo, but narrow it down to maybe your top two and then say, hey, let's sit down and look at these together and discuss as a team what makes the most sense for you and for our, our business and then commit to them. This is going to impact their job, but in a good way and make the commitment and follow through on why this is a good thing for them. I'll jump in. Um... Look at us maintaining this webinar while our host is having internet issues. Just beautiful. So, you know, I mean, I, see, I, see I can jump in, Adam, if you want, and maybe ask a question. Uh, oh, sure. Or otherwise, you can just, uh, you know, once you kind of uh, answer this question about, um, you know, with your company, can I also ask what do you do when you're nominating a champion, especially when um, clinics are onboarded and how would you know, what would the process look like for you, um, you know, in terms of getting your SEO and website sorted out? Well, I, the thing I would, you know, kind of answering these questions about, you know, how do we make people feel comfortable about it? How do we introduce this and not feel threatened? Remember, I, I say this a lot at Whisker Cloud. It's not about what we want. It's about what our customers want. It's sort of the same deal at a veterinary clinic, you know, they, you have to do what your clients are demanding you do and asking for. And, and just because you feel threatened by technology, guess what? Your staff might feel threatened by technology, but the five nearest clinics around you or the five nearest veterinary businesses or grooming businesses around you, they don't. And I can promise you all the company that uses technology versus the one that doesn't wins 100% of the time. So, you know, I, I really believe in what Mary was saying about you know, really communicating, really collaborating with the team. Um, but just remember, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I, I always, I, I say this a lot here. It's like, you know, you want to have great benefits. You want to have great pay. You want to take care of your people. You want to make upgrades to the clinic. You want to have the money for diagnostics machines that allow you to offer great care. You want to be able to have a whole grooming section built out into your veterinary clinic. You don't do that unless business is growing and you don't grow without technology, not in, not in the year 2023. So, you know, I think it's about um, leadership at the clinic and it could be anyone, it doesn't have to be the owners, doesn't have to be the vets, doesn't have to be the PM, it could be anyone at the clinic, um, but really diving deep into these things and, and really showing the team, you know, I really liked what Adam K was saying. It's just about you know, time is the most valuable resource on earth and technology gives you time back. And, and I got to tell you the days I've spent in, inside of veterinary hospitals, I mean, 
I wouldn't last eight hours there ever. I think, I think most days I would last two hours and I started like losing it. So, you know, technology helps that. I mean, imagine what it's like when you bring your pet to the vet and you have phones ringing and you have barking and you've got hissing and you've got all of these things happening. And just what if the phone could, could ring 10% less? I, we did a study that was like the average business phone call lasts four minutes and 52 seconds, you know, four minutes, 52 seconds. I mean, I'm sure everyone on this, everyone attending this has probably sat in a clinic and heard the phone ring all day. Each of those is five minutes. What if you could get rid of 20 of them? 20 calls because they were able to book online, 20 because they were able to book a grooming appointment, 20 because they were able to fill out a new client form on their Whisker Cloud site, or they were able to, you know, request a refill through the pet desk app. And, and you didn't have to take that call. Not that you don't want to talk to them. Why should you? You have other stuff to do. There's cats and dogs and humans around that need your personal touch. Um, so that's where, that's where technology comes in. And that's where technology um, helps you be a big, bigger business and helps you take better care of your people. That's my really short answer. Does anyone want the long one? Kidding. Hello. Um, thank you, Adam. I've, uh, I know that I'm British and I love a bit of irony, but I was kicked out by <laughs> Zoom. <laughs> so I'm joining via my phone. Oh, it, I swear God is testing me today. But um, so uh, where did um, we get to? Are we, I just want to make sure that we're discussing how to onboard the, the hospital team. Yeah, so I can jump in here. Um, so I totally agree with what Adam K said, you know, sharing the benefits and letting the team know what this means for them. Because, you know, when technology comes in, you're always thinking, mm, what's going to happen now? And we know this happens in, in every industry with like AI and things like that. We're all thinking, well, what's going to happen now? But it's all really down to the person who is using that tool and who is using that technology and how much and how much of advantage you take of that to make things easy for you. So for your front test team, uh, you, you know, you're reducing phone call volume so they can, uh, you know, focus on what's really important. So when it comes to the onboarding stage, it's important to not just tell them here are the benefits, but also share various statistics and case studies of that platform that you're going to use. So for example, at Vetstoria, we know a clinic called um, Osage Veterinary Clinic, you know, they told us, you know, an appointment takes about five to 15 minutes, but now that we're using the tool, phone call volume has reduced by 40% and that's quite huge. And that's, you know, that really changes things. So finding out statistics and success stories of how other people are using it and showing that they can also have that same experience and doing that maybe from phase by phase without telling your entire team in one go, but you know, you nominate that champion to spearhead the effort and you take it little by little and you get that bind from your various teams. That makes it easy to make that process of adopting technology a little bit smoother. Um, and yeah, I think using a couple of those points will make that onboarding journey a little bit better, especially with the champion. Um, because you have that one person who has already bought into that concept and then it's easy and then you get that training and you help everyone in the team understand how this platform works and they know that it's going to help them. So I think reiterating that point, especially at the start of adopting um, the technology, you know, really makes things easy. Do we lose Vicky again? Poor Vicky. We just can't keep her on the call. Um. Piggybacking off of what you said, Ishara, um, having that champion is so important because that is the person that could also help drive change management. Having someone yeah. on your team who is not in the management position be the one who is excited about these technologies, ready to adopt them and championing to the rest of the team, training the rest of the team. All of these pieces are so important. It just, if you manage the practice or own the practice, you do not have to be the one to be the champion. And in fact, a lot of times it's better to empower your team to do these things. So now you might not be doing those repetitive tasks, but you're managing this technology and you're going to be doing other more important tasks for the clinic as well. Thank you, Mary. And thank you all if I missed some of that while I was uh, scrambling my way to get back online via, via my phone. Can you all hear me okay? Yes, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, excellent. So thank you for sharing those insights. And, and before we lead into a bit of a, a Q&A session, um, just to summarise some of the takeaways uh, from today. 
Um, I think um, hopefully uh, the audience can see that we're no strangers to the veterinary industry. We know the challenges that you all face. Um, and we are very passionate about finding the problem and offering a solution using technology. Um, and ultimately we want you to get value from the product that you invest in, which in turn will offer value to your pet parents and of course the wider team. Um, I hope you've heard as well that we don't want to replace any team members. We just want you to be able to utilize the team so you can get, uh, they can get the most fulfillment out of their role um, because each team member is absolutely vital to the operational side of things. Um, the panelists today are all experts in their field and I hope you've been able to see how we can complement one another um, so that it can lead to better outcomes for your team, um, yourselves and of course the pet parents as well. Um, ultimately, we just want to help you so that you can work in an effective organised way, which in turn will increase profitability, um, but also make a happier team and happier clients. Um, so we can have a look at the Q&A. Um, I believe there was quite a number of questions um, that were entered. So bear with me, it makes it very interesting when you're doing it on a phone, just like Mary said a moment ago, um, how does it appear on the phone compared to a laptop? Um, okay. So, um, Asta, could you just see if I can get access to the Q&A because I can see the chat, but not the Q&A, which is interesting. Ishara, can you see the Q&A? Yes, oh, I can here we go. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Perfect. So yeah, a member of the audience has said, what if we have staff that is really nervous about technology? And I feel, um, Adam G, you may have responded to this as well. Could you just share it um, for, for the other participants as well? Yeah. So, you know, the thing I said is it's 2023. We don't get to be nervous about technology because, you know, sort of like what I was saying earlier, um, if you look at the most valuable companies on earth or the fastest growing, you know, and, and by the way, like any pet business, you don't have to be Amazon, you don't have to be Apple, but mm -hmm. you know, we, we talk a lot about um, issues with pay and veterinary medicine. We talk about burnout. Um, unfortunately, the, the fact of the matter is that when you increase revenue and you increase growth and you drive more people to a website, more people are able to mm -hmm book and download the app and, and, you know, get reminders and come in more often. It means you get to pay your people better. It means you get to have better benefits. So, you know, technology solves for a lot of those things. And, you know, it, it, we're going to be at the point where, you know, keep in mind, there was a point where we all had antennas on our TVs, the bunny ears, and, you know, we don't anymore. So as, as technology grows, um, just keep in mind, I, I say this a lot, it's, it's, it's not about you and your clinic. It's about what your customers want from you and what your clients want from you. And if your clients are demanding to be able to, you know, like my vet uses pet desk and, and mm -hmm. well before whisker cloud and pet desk were partners, I've used pet desk. You know, I, I have my 11 year old Boston Terrier right behind me snoring. I need to know when was the last time I got his apple club? When was the last time we did his senior blood work? How's he doing on this? Mm -hmm. Hey, I need to fill. You know, I demand those things out of my vet because I have three pets and it's important. So, you know, technology is nervous until you have it. And then a week later, you're like, how did I live without this thing? And, and, and mm -hmm. let's not get lost on the fact that all of us are talking and speaking and answering questions from each other right now because of technology, you know, um, you know, our, our vet story team are across the world. I'm in California. Um, we've got people literally on the other side of the planet and we're all able to talk with all of you together because of technology. I mean, that's the power of technology. Absolutely. And I agree. Thank you for that. Um, and another question that came through um, was with regards to online scheduling, how front desk teams remain in control and, you know, what is the chance of double bookings and errors? Um, Ishara, can you perhaps answer that one? Yeah, for sure. So I know that's definitely a concern. One thing is... Um, a key thing, with, especially with a tool like Vetstoria, is that we integrate with practice management systems, over 30 of them. And even from that very first conversation that we have, we show how um, Vetstoria would um, integrate with the practice management system, what the appointment would look like, and how it gets recorded, how it gets checked twice, where we try to reduce errors as much as possible. So the integration that Vetstoria, for example, has with 
these practice management systems that we integrate with is really tied. And then second of all, the customizations that you can um, apply to make sure that the availability that you are offering to pet owners, I mean, it doesn't mean because you offer online booking, pet owners just can't come into your site and just book anything. They can book what you let them or what you want them to book out of what's available to you. So if you have um, a, a vet or a doctor who is just not keen to see a specific type of species like on a Monday afternoon or is keen on seeing rabbits on Thursdays or just doesn't want to do anything on a Friday afternoon. Very rare, but you know, you, you, whatever the preferences that they have in mind or if you're just allowing vaccinations on a Monday morning, maybe you don't. But whatever it is, you can set that up um, on vet storia. And when you set each of those appointment types, you can determine how uh, long each of those appointments are going to be. What, who is it really for? Is it going to be for a new client? Is it going to be for an existing? Or is it going to be for everybody? Um, you can set limitations. You can set, uh, you can set maximum appointments. You can reserve um, the slot counts. So, you know, you keep some of them for like walk-ins. We have things called slot exclusion, where if you don't want anyone to book anything between 12 and 1 because, you know, lunch is precious. Um, you can do that. So those are just some of the basic things. And holidays are coming up. And if you want to ensure no one books an appointment, then um, you can add holidays. Again, Just that's just the surface of the customizations um, and, you know, the various rules that clinics can use with, with story when they're offering online booking. But, yeah, that is just to, you know, just let everyone know that when you offer availability through Vetstoria, you are completely in control because you get to decide how it's going to be because Vetstoria understands how a clinic runs. We have that, we come from that experience. So we are able to say, you know, customize it the way you like. So that also kind of puts teams at ease because they get to just be in charge of how it's going to be available. Absolutely. Um, thank you for that, Ishara. And um, Adam Kay, I know that, um, you know, sort of with, with your software, um, it's more of a sort of, you know, requesting an appointment. Um, could you sort of uh, perhaps elaborate on that as well, how you avoid Absolutely. double bookings or errors? Yeah, so Ishara made some great points. I was actually going to hop in right after her. So genius. Um, pretty much we offer both booking and requesting so her touching on the holidays is a phenomenal example um knowing that winter holiday season everyone wants their dogs to look the best when they're having mm -hmm. everyone over for dinner whatever um groomers often see a lot of burnout and see a huge uptick in appointments as well as right before the summer everyone that gets their once a year shave down type of thing so to help them manage all of this influx and this volume, we allow them to swap between booking, which their booking link, they could go in and have a free for all of their schedule. Everyone can begin to book it up or they can toggle that over to requesting. So allowing them to kind of gatekeep their appointments mm -hmm. and we offer many, many different features to help score their clients, score the pets, tag them if there's like, an unruly dog that you know should take an hour and it's going to be three hours you can decide to maybe omit that appointment and pack in your day with like your favorite clients so offering capabilities like that to ease the team especially during the most stressful seasons i mean i've worked retail in the holidays and i couldn't imagine doing dog grooming around the clock um people are very demanding and being able to guardrail that like i've mentioned with you know, features and politely technology allows you to be a little bit more polite because it's a little more emotionless. So if you have all of your processes or your policies spelt out when they're going to book an appointment, it helps answer a lot of questions, diffuse some potential, you know, disgruntled employees and I mean, um, clients rather not employees and help the employees work their best. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Adam, for that. I really do appreciate it. And there's actually a really um, interesting question. Um, are clients actually using these applications and services? Does it actually help them come back? And Mary, I think you may be uh, really great to answer this one. Yeah, I mean, I can speak for what we see at Pet Desk for sure, which is that um, 
app users, people who have that app on their phone are coming back three times more per year than non-app users. So that I think is some data that really speaks to the fact that yes, people are utilizing this technology. Yes, they want it. And yes, it is driving more business into your practice. Absolutely. Um, and another question here, um, okay, it says, our website is bad and I don't know how to tell my doctor since they manage it alone, bless them. Um, Adam G, could you uh, provide some insight here? Give me their phone number. I will call them <laughs> a hard call for you. Um, I think the fact of the matter is a lot of websites are bad. Most websites are bad. But, well, most non-Whisker Cloud websites are bad. Come on. I was always going to say that. But um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of bad websites out there. And I think when they manage it alone, um, you know, they're not web designers. Guess what? I should not do anything related to my pet's care alone because that's not what I went to school for. I shouldn't. You know, I if I I shouldn't change oil in my car. You know, you shouldn't give yourself a haircut. There's a lot of things in life you probably shouldn't do by yourself. And um, you know, and that that's part of growing a business. And you know, I can tell you all a long time ago, at Whisker Cloud, I prided myself on being sort of the best designer, the best coder, the best marketer, the best social media, the best advertising person. And and you know, here we are seven years later with um, you know. God, over 60 people now with the full team. And it's like, I'm, I'm not even in the top five. That mean, That's the sign of a strong business. I shouldn't be the best at anything we do other than being the best CEO of the company. So, you know, I, I think it's really important to, you know, when you have anything in your business is to find technology that helps outsource what you can um, and hire experts to do those things. So, um, yeah, I think it's time to tell the doctor, you know, and, and honestly, the easiest thing you might run into is just go pull up websites of, you know, any clinics around you or any businesses around you, show them those websites and just, you know, have that honest conversation. Are we better than this? They have, they have online booking with that story. We don't, that's a problem. They have online forms. We don't, that's a problem. Um, they, it looks like they offer a pet desk app. They don't, that's a problem for us. So we're mm -hmm. losing, we're losing all of these battles right now. Um, I mean, the, the best, the best, fastest growing, biggest companies on earth put a lot of effort into their website. Um, and it's not just always about how it looks and how it functions. It's about security. It's about privacy policies. It's about forms. It's about making sure, mm -hmm. I think everyone on this call be shocked to know how much goes into making, making it simple for someone to send you a message to your website. We have to use like 10 different apps to make sure there's like spam protection, security, SMTP, it gets delivered, it gets tracked properly. I mean, there's all those little things that, you know, if you're building a website alone, prob you're probably not getting all your messages. You're probably missing out on SEO and traffic. You're probably not converting people. Um, and at the end of the day, I think any, any smart business owner or doctor is just going to have to sit back and say, what's more important, the pride that I get out of building this website myself or growing the company. And I, and I, and I hope everyone chooses growing the company and taking better care of their employees and, and customers. And I think you touched on a really interesting point as well, because I, th I think over the years we've seen increasingly that veterinary teams are wearing many hats. You know, they, they've got a job that they love. They want to be clinicians or nurses, et cetera. And then they're learning more and more about the digital age and how do we become marketeers? How do we build a website? How do we promote our business on social media? Um, and I think you're right that while... Um, there'll be some you know, more than competent people uh, being able to do this and having the time to do it. Um, certainly reaching out to, to the experts in this field and receiving their guidance is, is beneficial for, for all. Um, so thank you, Adam. I really um, value your response. And I've also got another question, um, probably one for you, Ishara here. Um, how can we stop emergencies from booking online or clients booking the wrong appointments? Yeah, I think this has, uh, you know, been a question that, you know, we've heard a lot as well. So we did talk a little bit about some of the features that, um, you know, you can use to make sure that, you know, pet owners just book out of what you offer. But there are also a couple of features, um, for example, one that we offer called disclaimers, so that when a clinic is using Vetstoria on their website, and as they start the booking journey, um, there's these messages that you can offer to them saying, okay, 
this is what you need to do. If you are a new client, here are some of the instructions for you. Um, these are the sort of um, appointments that might be available. If this is the specific sort of appointment you're booking, these might be some samples that you need to bring. So those kind of messages can be added to the step that you want of the booking process. So this way we educate the pet owner, we set that expectation and we let them know, here's how you go through this process. Here's what's going to happen. And here's how you can book this appointment correctly. Mm -hmm. So there's that feature. And there's also one called appointment screening, for example. Sometimes they might try to book a specific type of appointment. And when they type the appointment reason, they realize, oh, maybe that's not you know, the slot that I'm looking for, maybe I want to go back to something else, but I have to mention my appointment reason anyway, but with appointment screening, it will flag to the pet owner, okay, we see that you're trying to book this, but by the symptom that you just typed, it looks like this is what you should be doing, please call the clinic. So you can um, trigger those kind of messages based on what the pet owner is trying to do. So that feature called appointment screening, again, helps um, trigger some of these messages uh, based on some of the keywords that the pet owner is trying to, um, you know, type in there as well. So those are just a couple of features that, you know, clinics can um, leverage to make sure that pet owners book the right appointment. Um, and of course, like I mentioned before, with things like slot exclusions and things like that, you can, of course, reserve some, you know, slots for yourself and keep walk-ins and emergencies. And always with these, communicate and let the pet owner know Looks like this is an emergency. Please call the clinic immediately. So yeah, those are a couple of things that you can do. Absolutely. And I think it's important to mention with Vetstoria is that if you have emergency block offs in your schedule, um, you know, if you yes. want to sort of Absolutely. accommodate, um, yeah, walk-ins and you have a particular, normally it's the morning, right, that we see these yeah. are at the end of the day, um, we fully integrate. Um, so we cannot look over the top of those. So if you have an emergency cesarean come in, you block out your schedule, we can no longer book appointments at the same time. Um, so that's something as well um, worthy of a mention. Um, so excellent. I think we're coming to the sort of end of the webinar. I'll just check to see if there's any other Q and A's quickly. Um, oh, okay. So no shows are a problem at my clinic. What tech tactics would you recommend to reduce them? Uh, Mary, you happy to take that one? Yeah, I can squeeze this into a minute. Um, Thank communicate you. to your clients with the preferences they choose. So you can't just select one type of communication for every single client. Some people are still going to need to call you to confirm, or you're going to need to call them to confirm or whatever it may be. So every other client should receive communication based on what they respond to and what makes the most sense for them. So the platform that you choose to do appointment reminders, health service reminders, all those kinds of things should be a platform that um, reaches clients where they are and uh, listens to their preferences. Thank you. Um, excellent. Well, thank you to everybody for joining today. Um, there are going to be a few QR codes appear on the screen. So if you'd like more information, uh, please scan away. And I hope that this webinar has been a bit of a stepping stone for you to explore technology and ways that it can help you and your teams. Um, and thank you to the, the panelists as well for, for joining me and um, being patient with my technology woes uh, during the middle of that webinar. I really appreciate all of your time. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.